second tip was to prepare instructions. And I always make a conscious decision about why I'm using an Excel workbook and I make sure that it's the best tool for the job that I'm doing. And so one of the things that I also do is I keep track of certain items and I put those as the first worksheet in my workbook. And the reason I do that is because if I go back to a workbook that I haven't worked with in a month or maybe six months, I can easily see what my purpose and goals were, what my methodology or the steps for what I was trying to accomplish are. I can also take a look and see what my resources and sources are that I used, as well as the status. I really keep track of how many things I have to do, where I'm finding that information, where I left off, where I need to pick up. And one of the reasons to do that is not only for yourself, but if you share this workbook with someone else, another um, researcher that you're working with, or maybe somebody at your society who's also working on this project. They can easily see your methodology or your instructions, and they can pick it up and go from there, whether you explain it to them or it's there to be explained to them. So this is what one of my instruction sheets looks like. This is another one of those things that you really want to make your own. How best do you work through things or what's your workflow? So I always have that title and in this instance it was gathering all the information in one workbook for my Scotland censuses where I have a, a label for dates and instructions as well as the status. And then I list by year and then break it down by the day that I worked on it. So as you can see there are dates in 2000 2013, 2014, 2015. And I list what it is I need to do, where I got the information from, and whether that task is completed or not. I list the resources and my source citations. So in this instance, I was gathering the information from Family Search, and then in another instance, I was adding on information from Find My Past that had additional information about these censuses. Another real important thing to do, especially if you use color, is to have a key. And your sheet tabs can be particular colors, your cell headings can be particular colors, and your cell font colors or cell fill can be colors. So if you take advantage of color to assist you in, for instance, seeing if something's done, seeing if something is an issue, uh, I always use red for if I have a question or an issue, and I might use colors for where I got the information from. Ancestry is always green, find my past is blue, and family search is orange. And so I have those color codes in there so that I know exactly where I got the information from when I'm taking a look at it. Whatever color system you use, be sure to include a key or a legend. Our second tip was about having an instruction sheet. And this just shows you what mine looks like in practice. So I have a title that I've added. And as you can see, I've merged and centered it. So it shows up there. I have a row. This is row three. And in B3, is where I've placed date and instructions. And in C3, and you can tell that from this name box, is where I've included the status. I've included all of the methodology for what I'm doing. I've included my resource, where I got that information from and how I'm going to be working with it. And I've also included a key so that I know by the color what I'm working with for my sheet tabs, which are down along here, my cell headings, which are at the top, and my cell font colors or cell fill. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in practice. This is the 1841 Scotland census that will bring up every instance of Keo because that was a search that I did and then I downloaded the information into Excel. And so the individual's name with my spelling, there's only eight of them, and then I have a couple variants. So the other spellings are here, but they're all, in my understanding, Keo's. Orange indicates to me that I got this information from Family Search. So that's a very simple way for me to always tell when I have downloaded information where it comes from. The additional information I got from Find My Past and they include occupation, they include the street that people live on, their house name, um, and then there's some birthplace information that it's just nice to check against what you got from Family Search to see if there's any questions. But there's 
Additional information oftentimes you get depending on whether you're using Family Search's index of documents or Find My Past or Ancestry or My Heritage or anything else. And then I always have a section for my own notes. I might be looking through this and have questions or comments or things to think about. And one thing I want you to be aware of right from the beginning, and so this is a little extra with this, is that I have a note here that this looks to be a duplicate. I could always copy that note and I could include it as a comment. And so what you'll see here is that I've already done that. And that is that little red arrow there. So if you either wanted to save space or you wanted your comment to be directly in the cell that it referred to, you could go to Review and you could add a new comment. And that is a note that becomes part of your document and it shows up here when you hover over it. And so there's a couple of different ways of doing things, always in Excel, and that shows you that you could put your notes directly into that cell.